This time we're heading to Victoria, BC for Julian's first ever visit to Canada. First, here's how we arrived. From Seattle, there are several ways to get to Victoria, which we'll talk about later on in this video. But what we chose to do is drive to Swasen and catch a ferry from there. Good evening, we're waiting. Good afternoon, actually. It's not quite evening, but it probably looks like evening. But yes, we are in Canada. This is our first time in Canada since COVID, and we are waiting to get on a ferry. And right now, it's very questionable if we're going to get on this ferry or not. Oh, he's counting. I know. We're so close. We're waiting for, oh, the, for the verdict. We're really hoping we make it on. We're going to Victoria, British Columbia, which is a picturesque place, and we have a nice place on the waterfront, so we're excited. Oh, oh, oh my god. Oh, 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 oh my god, yes. Oh, thank you. Yes, thank you, good sir. <laughs> They're not turning us back now. Nope, we are here. We even need a ticket. No one's asking for it. Maybe this guy will. No, they don't care. Nope, they don't care. I guess if you made it this far, you got a ticket. <laughs> wow. Yeah, wow. Barely. <laughs> Barely. <laughs> We did it. Oh Survived. Barely made it. Okay, we're good. Great start to our Thanksgiving weekend trip. Oh yes, it's Thanksgiving. <laughs> so we're going to Canada. We're thankful for getting on this ferry. Yeah. It feels like you're locked in. <laughs> well, it's like a spaceship, eh? All right. All right, oops. Okay. It's nearly $100 for two adults, a child, and a car to travel by ferry, but the ride is 90 minutes aboard a rather nice looking boat, including a pretty impressive cafeteria. 15 bucks for a chicken sandwich. It's Canadian, I remember. That's true. <laughs> Let's see the exchange rate. Okay, everybody's getting cozy over here, and my god, they even have metal spoons on the ferry. So we have fries mm -hmm. and pot pie and fruit for Julian primarily, but who we'll helped too. Well, we destroyed that pot pie. What is your review of, uh, of the food? So far, the ferry experience, A+. This is so much better. Like Washington State Ferries has some food, and it's kind of a similar cafeteria style, but this is like pretty popular. Wow. A rare occasion to have fries. That's right. Between the beef and the fruit and the fries, the fries win for him. <laughs> yeah, the sky. <laughs> uh -oh. Every staircase is a playground. Last night we made it to our hotel after dark, so here it is now in the glorious sunshine. So we went out for dinner last night, which was actually some of the best Greek food that we've ever had in the Northwest. Well, I'm from the Balkans, so when we saw Greek food, it had to be done, and we got it going on here with appetizers. They're both sizzling hot, and one was flambe, and the other one is on cast iron. Cheese is called Saganiki, the other one is called Lukaniki. <laughs> and um, this famous sausage from Greece that I grew up eating. Well, really awesome way to start off our trip here. But today it's sunny. It's actually one of the only, maybe the only sunny day that we're gonna get while we're here. So we have to go take advantage of it. So now we're looking for a little waterfront trail. We were told, see, there's a waterfront um, taxi thing. Oh, interesting. It might even be there. That might be it actually, yeah. So around the hotel, our hotel is on the waterfront and we reach a trail. So we at least walk on the water for a little bit. Way right over here on this little bay, harbor they call it. So now we're gonna walk around here and then get to the downtown area. Here's the back of our hotel. All it's right. Nice. Yeah, this is the hotel. Our room is actually right over there. Mm -hmm. One of those little balconies is ours. Oh, and the pool is right over those uh, those glass things right there. Oh, that's there. cool. So the it's pool. half indoor, half outdoor. Oh, that's great. There's already a little houseboat next to the hotel. Here's a little lily pond getting hit by the sunlight. Yeah, these condos next to us have a nice water feature. And then they have actual water, like right next to it, natural water. Yeah, all the boats are here, and we're on the real harbor, so it's not some kind of dead body of water. The exit of the harbor is that way, 
So when you come from Seattle on the boat called the Clipper, you arrive from there. You guys didn't know you can actually, from downtown Seattle, go to the waterfront, hop on a ferry, and arrive directly in downtown Victoria. Yeah. Which is the first time that I came to Canada was through that way. And I got chicken pox on the ferry. <laughs> <laughs> when we come around here, the water plane is taking off. Did you look, airplane. There it is. So another thing is you can catch the Victoria Clipper ferry over, or you can drive over, or you can catch a seaplane over. These seaplanes, I think they maybe do some scenic flights around, but they will also fly you directly to Seattle, which is really cool. But obviously the seaplane, I think, is going to cost the most amount of money. it was a 15-minute walk into the main attractions of downtown Victoria, including the iconic Parliament House and Hotel Fairmont Empress. Before long, we reached our first destination of the day. We're about to let Julia run through the narrowest street in North America. Let's see how he likes that. He likes narrow things. So this is called Fantun Alley, and it's in Chinatown, and it is indeed pretty narrow. Julian walking through the narrowest street in North America. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead, see, see what you can see. Well, we had fun here in Chinatown through the smallest uh, street in North America. Julian loved it here in all over. Then I had to spend a lot of money at Arcteryx, but hey, it was on sale. And it is my favorite clothing brand. Uh, we're about to cross over this bridge here, we'll show you. And see, because that side of the city looks really sunny. And the bridge is done super well with um, walking and biking path. I can't get over this nice weather we're getting today. We lucked out today. So far, this could be like a May day or something. It feels so nice. It feels like spring. It doesn't feel like fall. Yeah. Altogether, I will say Victoria is very livable. More so than big cities, I think. Even in the smaller city in BC, you get much better infrastructure than what you get in Washington State, even in the densest parts like Seattle. Like, we don't have bridges like this, overpasses like this, walking paths like these they do here. So I was just lamenting the fact that there wasn't much of a beach here because there's so much water. But lo and behold, there actually is a nice little beach. Now, I don't know if I'd swim in here because there are quite a bit of boats. You can kind of see like a film of oil on the water, but it is nice that there's, there's even like little sand down here. Well, right now we're just basking in the sunshine and really enjoying the water next to us because they've built such great walking paths here by the water. Well, there's a lot of residential buildings right here. It looks like, you know, on the other side we see our hotels. So we're directly across the way from where our hotel is. But, you know, there's some other buildings that looks like you can probably live right here if you want to, which is nice. There's this really nice path. I don't know how, how long it is, but a lot of people are jogging it or biking on it, and it looks really fantastic for that. It's really quiet and serene and clean and beautiful. It's pretty neat here that this water is very functional. There's lots of boats. I bet a lot of people go sailing from here. You can go kayaking, rowing. You can take a seaplane. But as we keep going, you know, you see it keeps going down there and start getting more nature vibes. It's cold, so uh, it's about four-ish, and uh, it's sunset in the northwest right now. So we're here at Clover Point Park looking for a nice sunset view, and we found one. Right there, the sun is setting. What you're seeing in the back there are the Olympic Mountains, which are back in the USA, and they already have snow if you zoom up there. But we were there not too long ago, a month ago, where we were eating crabs, and now we're on the other side of this water, in Victoria, Canada. You can actually catch a uh, ferry, the Black Ball Ferry from 
Port Angeles all the way over to uh, Victoria, which is pretty cool. And that was how our original plan to do that, to come here, but we couldn't because it was booked up, so we had to go the other way. Julian threw his mittens. Oh. <laughs> he loves them for one second and then he takes them off. Let's show. Okay. <laughs> and he's like, Dada, my mittens are on the ground. Well, that's because okay. he threw them. Yes, it's uh, very different from yesterday. It's not sunny, but it is not raining. So we're grateful for that. But yes, this feels more like Seattle or even London, honestly. Mm. And it's fall, leaves here fall on. Some remain yellow. But we're walking through this really nice walking zone of Victoria, BC, where there are no cars. Yeah, we just had uh, breakfast or brunch at this point at uh, the farmhouse, which really good coffee, really good sandwiches. Now we're trying to figure out what else to do for the rest of the day, but right now, yeah, this, this area here is really nice for strolling. The other great thing is that I stumbled upon an Arcteryx sale and they hid my size and what I wanted oh. that I've been scheming to get and I was like, I need a sale price because I'm not baller enough to buy Arcteryx full price or at least I have more discipline than that. <laughs> But yes, uh, I was not so lucky. Uh, I did try a few things, right? I had my eye on a few things and did not work out size-wise. But that is actually a great point of like, if you can get the right clothing, you can actually enjoy this weather or at least be out in it and not be miserable, which that's... is a key part to living in this kind of environment. Yeah, that's right. So if you look around, this is the home of almost all outdoors apparel, Yeah. Uh, the Pacific Northwest. And the best of all, I think is Arcteryx, but um, Many people are wearing exactly this kind of clothing because it's rainy, windy. Um, yeah, it's like this marine climate. So I bought two layers and now I'm wearing them and I feel great even though it's not the best weather. So today's actually Black Friday and we've accidentally stumbled upon the shopping center and just to give Julian a place to run around that's not cold, we're gonna let him wander through the mall and maybe see if there are some Black Friday sales for ourselves. What you doing, Julian? the day and we've come to check out the totem poles but we just know that it's a really big concentration of some of the biggest and nicest totem poles that we've seen in the Northwest so we're gonna go check these out and we're getting really lucky because there's been a break in the weather and the Sun has come out to shine they are really nice totem poles so these totem poles are right outside of the Royal BC Museum, which we have not checked out yet. We might save it for tomorrow because tomorrow is supposed to be an actually rainy day. Uh, today we got lucky because it was rainy in the morning, but it actually cleared up really nicely in the afternoon to the point where the sun is actually up and there's even a hint of blue sky, actually a lot of blue sky. So we got really lucky for this afternoon. This parliament building is super ornate. And like I said, it doesn't look anything like the one that we have in Washington state, but it actually reminds me of the one that's over in Boise, Idaho, which is not quite as ornate as this, but pretty similar in terms of the vibe, at least in my opinion. No, oh, this is a perfect railing for you. <laughs> you can actually hold on to it. Well, since we were in front of the Parliament building and they're open till 5 o'clock and it's only 3.30, we decided to walk in and check it out since it is free to check out to the public. And right now, actually, they have a giant Christmas tree. It's 
a huge line. Look at that. A pretty quintessential thing to do when you're here in Victoria is to go to afternoon tea. And while it's not afternoon, because it's a little bit hard to do with Julian, who's right here, we're coming into Murchies, which is a little bit more casual and just a little bit easier to just grab and go something and not so formal either. Murchies, by the way, is the oldest Canadian tea company, started in 1894, which you would never tell by looking at it. It's in pretty good shape for being so old. So here we have some regular coffee. I ended up getting the Christmas tea latte here. Since it is holiday time, also had a cheese scone, which is pretty good. It's nice and warm and buttery. And we have the seasonal Reuben croissant. And then I couldn't help it, I had to get a sweet one. This is a marzipan cake. Oh, even the silverware's hot, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of nice. Well, we've made it over to Beacon Hill Park, which is not too far from downtown. And it's nice because this is a nice retreat from, or re retreat into nature. And Julian's already getting very excited to be seeing these trees and nature out here. We have conditioned him properly when he sees trees. He's like, wow. <laughs> yeah, trees. see? <laughs> trees, yeah. yeah. Let's trees. go there. He wants to go that way to the trail. We are learning to be in tune with the boy. And then when he's happy, we let him enjoy. When he starts showing signs of wanting something else, we react and let him play or give him food. You got to kind of sync the mind wave with them. Another thing we're noticing is the fall color is still nice right now, almost December. What is it, 28th of November? Yeah. The boy is exploring. We've made him a little explorer. It's yeah, yeah, look at that tree. big tree, baby. Big tree. Wow. All right, Juju, look. Do you see the birds over there? There's two birds. Yeah. Peacock, baby. It's coming this way. Is it? Oh, it is. I might have to protect him from that beak. Peacock. Yes, you are. Peacock. <laughs> Nice detail here, how it's all red. And the bridge itself is red, so they kind of coordinated it. But yeah, look at this little creek they made. This whole creek is full of them, it's cool. Well, a lot of ducks here. They like chickens, but a little bit... More delicious. Different. Yes, more delicious <laughs> than chickens. I'll agree with you on that one. Well, the main reason why we wanted to come to Beacon Hill Park was to come to the little farm which is here there's like a little petting zoo and <laughs> might be able to hear them a bunch of goats chickens uh, but unfortunately it's closed for the winter so got to come during warmer times of the year but we can at least kind of see them through the fence here there's one called lemon sorbet a goat <laughs> yeah <laughs> on cookies and cream snowdrop <laughs> one is coming to see us Oh, yeah. Look at that one. Very cute. Reggie go. said go. Yes, you're ready. Go, go, go. <laughs> he goes. <laughs> We're coming this way. <laughs> I saw uh -huh. that look. He doesn't like to listen. Juju. He's like, you want to go there? I do the opposite in yeah. greens. Well, we made it to the top of Beacon Hill Park. And as you can see behind me, it gives you a really awesome view of the ocean and the mountains. And it's pretty easy to walk up here, but there's actually a road as well and a little parking lot. So if you want to drive up here instead, then that's totally doable. But I recommend coming up the hill because of the view. And it's just so different compared to the lower end of this park, which has the petting zoo and it's got the maples and just totally different. Way out there, I think, is where we went for sunset at the dog park. Well, we're here for the uh, holiday parade, which is happening tonight, and it's actually coming by right now.
parade. Lillian loves the parade. He's like, wow, wow, pointing at everything. He's impressed. It's his first parade.